everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bank and Pound, man. I appreciate the love. <clears throat> I appreciate the support. We rolling, man. We rolling. We getting on down the line, man. It's 33 years of prison stories, man. I hope y'all still rocking with me. Um, hope I done picked up some new people, man, to come ride on this journey. But before we get started, man, like I say always, man, please, if you watching this on a regular basis, just check the status and make sure you subscribe. If you not, it won't take you but a minute. Don't cost nothing. Hit that subscribe button and um, let's get this thing moving along. Also, share these videos, like these videos. The likes help a lot and the comments help a lot because it helps YouTube to move us around in the algorithm, man, where they'll start sharing these videos and we'll even grow even faster. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to grow. We're trying to spread this message, man. We're trying to move this stuff all over, man, so we can get this good positive energy out and possibly stop a couple of people, man, from making some uh, dumb decisions like I made when I was young. With that being said, man, on to the next ride, man. Yeah, Nottaway, Nottaway was crazy, man. It was crazy. I couldn't win on Nottaway, man. I had no wins on there at all. And then they shipped me off to Power Tan. So, man, Power Tan started out kind of rough because, like I say, we was on the bus. Oh, uh, for man, like 12 hours, man. 12 hours when you on that bus. That's one of the worst things about getting transferred. I hate it. I, I, I just hated it. Never had a good experience with it. Because you shackled up and you handcuffed up with this black box on. And, man, you can't move your wrist. You, you can't move your feet. If you get an itch, you just messed up. You got to use the bathroom. You messed up. You got to hold it. You know, so it's it's just a rough experience, man. You packed in on this bus, and you like that. The seats is hard. It's uncomfortable, and it's just um yeah. I I never had a good experience with it at all. So normally when you when you go on these transfers like that, Powhatan is the exchange place. So they go to Powhatan anyway, and a lot of buses be in there. And they be exchanging people get switch buses just going to different institutions. But that's actually the change of uh, spot power tan but we actually had to sit out there even if we was going to power tan we had to sit out there do a wait to do all these exchanges and everything before we actually even get to get on another bus that's just going to drive us around to the front entry and then we get around there we're going to have to sit down and wait for hours or two till they get their stuff together you know get us off of the bus put us in a holding cell we go in the holding cell when we get in the holding cell, then we got to be strip searched. Uh, we got to be assigned to a building, all of this, man. So, you know, like I said, this was about 12, 13 hour uh, ride. Um, you can't wait to get in there, try to use the bathroom. You get in there, use the bathroom. Then you still trying to get to where you got to get because you're still uncomfortable. Your wrist hurt. My wrist always swells up when I um, put them handcuffs on for that long. It's some type of reaction to my skin. I swell up. And um, so I'm already irritated, frustrated. We ain't had nothing to eat. You know, a bologna sandwich and an orange when we first left. That's it. So trying to get in here, get something to eat, get where I'm going, get comfortable, find out who my cellie is, find out where I'm at, and get, you know what I'm saying, get, get you know, kind of settled in. So they just having us sitting in the holding tank, man. They exchanging shifts. And they just walking right by us and talking like we just don't even exist. You know, they laughing and joking and the ones coming on work, getting all work, talking about, you know, street stuff and all this and all that. Why we sitting here like, you know, monkeys in a zoo, man. It's just, I'm telling you, it's a horrible experience, man. So, you know, I can remember that time, man, because I got irritated as I don't know what, man, because I was asking them, kept asking everybody just walking by, man, we going to get something to eat or what, man, and y'all going to get us up out of here. So, you know, <laughs> and literally say, you know, needless to say, they don't like that at all. They don't like nobody to speak out. They don't like nobody to stand up for themselves. They don't like that at all because they just feel like they in such a power position and authority. They're like, who are you to question them? So 
I can remember, man, I would ask a couple of people, man. They were like, I don't know, man. Hold on, this, that, and the third. I'm entering toward these faces of the COs, the ones that, you know, got some smart to say or whatever, because I know when I see them on the compound, I ain't going to never like them. You know what I'm saying? I'm always going to be getting them the mean mug, because I ain't, ain't going to like you. If you come up, the first impression is going to be my impression of you all the time. So I know that's how you carried it or whether you was putting on or showing off or whatever. But I just was trying to inventory their faces. So I won't get no results and whatnot. And then heck come I see a dude coming in there with a uh, with a big hat on. You know, a big hat is either lieutenant, captain, major, whatever. So I see <laughs> I see this tall uh uh brown skinned dude coming in there pimping like he in a uh uh, uh, exploitation movie, you know, like, you know, from back in the day, you know, the Mac or something. He got this big hat on, but it's cocked to the side, and he just pimping and walking. I'm like, man, who is this clown right here? This is what I'm saying in my mind. So, as he get closer, you can see their bars on their, on their lapel, which tells you where they're lieutenant, sergeant, captain, or whatever. So, he a captain. I look at his name tag, and I see Johnson. So I'm like, uh, yo, yo, you a captain, man. You a cap, Captain Johnson. So he talking to somebody. So I'm trying to get his attention. So then he just turned around and give me like one of them looks like, can't you see me talk? You know, so I'm like, he said, hold on, man. So I'm looking at him like, I'm like, yeah, all right. So um, he looked back at me again, finished talking. Then he come over. He said, what's up? So I said, man, we've been in here, man. We've been on the bus, man, 12, 13 hours, man. We've been in here. You know, sitting out here in front of the joint for about an hour. We've been sitting here, man. We trying to get to where we going. And we trying to get something to eat, man. Is we going to get something to eat? At least get something to eat, man. You know, so he was like, um, that what you called me for? I was like, yeah. He said, man, they going to get to you when they get to you, man. I said, oh, man. I ain't, I, yeah, okay. I said, I shouldn't have even said nothing to you. I see what type of time you want. Go ahead on, man. So he said, uh, he started walking up and he's turning around. He said, what you say? I said, go ahead on, man. You ain't no help. You, you know what I'm saying? You ain't no help. Go ahead on, man. You know? So he said, mm, okay. I got me one, huh? i see you when you get back here. I said, okay, I'm coming. I ain't got nowhere else to go. I'm coming back there. He said, oh, yeah, I know you is. i see you when you get back there. So I'm like, oh, man, this going to start off on a bad foot already because this is a captain. So he got some pull, ain't no question, because he a captain. But at the same time, I'm, I'm always going to stand up for me. You know what I'm saying? Whatever come with it, that's what come with it, man. But they was dragging us, and they know they was dragging us. So, you know, I, I go ahead on with the little process, man. They ended up coming back there, strip searching all of us, giving us our property, uh, not our property, but giving us our clothes and stuff back, get dressed, um, telling us we're going into the building, we're going into another salad port in there, and they're going to bring us something to eat. So we get up in there. They put us in another hole in cell. They started bringing us trays. We want them some trash. They could have kept that. You know what I'm saying? So while we in there, they bringing us exchange of clothes now because we get the tra we got to transfer in this little uh, flimsy jumpsuit. So they bringing us clothes now, you know, blues, shirts, or whatever, and giving us cell assignments of where we going, right? Now, back up a few minutes because when we get there, or when we leaving out of the way and we go to get on the bus, man, lo and behold, I told y'all the dude that had on out of the way that went and told the people that um, checked in and told the people that he would, uh, I was going to kill him and, and, and Rap Brown was going to kill him if, if, if he ain't had his money and they locked me up. I ain't see the cat no more. He stayed in jail. He ain't come out. So when we go to get transferred, had this clown come out here in shackles. And in uh in, in, in handcuffs too, he getting transferred too. And as soon as I seen him, he seen me, boy's eyes got big as a saucer. But you know, we shocked and handcuffed up and everything, but we getting on the same bus. And I just look at him and he said, Oh yeah, yeah, man, yeah, I gotta tell you about that situation. I said, Oh, what a tangle where we we. I said, Boy, you better hope you ain't going to where I'm going. He said, uh, no, man, look, man. I said, man, yeah, okay. Now, I won't go, you know, do nothing critical to him. But as God is my witness, I was going to slap fire from him, man. As soon as I got a chance to, if they would have put him right where I was at, I was going to slap his face off, you know, for crossing me up for nothing. I try to help you and you cross me. I was going to slap his face off and show us grits and groceries, you know. But um, we get on the bus and everything. And like I say, he keep trying to talk to me, talk to me. And sure enough, 
he going to power 10. So, so we, <laughs> he was scared to death. So we get on power 10, we get on that joint, and I say by the time we get to the other holding cell, he keep on trying to talk to me. I told him I want to talk to him, man, let's leave him alone. So when we get in the holding cell, when we get in our food and stuff, and they done took the handcuffs off now, and they going to, you know, give us our cell sign, but we got to eat, so they took the handcuffs off. Man, that man was scared to death. That man went up and stood by the bars and everything and told the people that he wanted to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? He checking in. So I ain't going to do nothing to him right there anyway. You know what I'm saying? I'm just getting on the compound. I ain't, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going out like that. So he's scared to death. So he thinking I'm going to do something to him so bad. He trying to go to jail. He trying to check in. Now I'm scared because I'm thinking he going to tell him he trying to check in because of me. Then I'm in a whole other, other situation. But I guess he learned this lesson for the first time. He see how that stuff can come back on him. Because like I say, you do dirt, that dirt going to find you. You know, and then if it find you, you might mess around with the wrong person. You end up in the dirt. That's how it go. You know, dirt for dirt for dirt. You know what I'm saying? So he check in though, but he don't say my name or nothing. He said somebody on the compound that he don't want to be on there with. Whatever, whatever. They go ahead on, cuff him up, take him out, and, 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 and you know, lock him up. I ain't even never see him the whole time I was on the compound, which was good. Because like I said, I was going to slap fire from him. For real. But that was a good thing for me. So while we in there eating and everything, all of a sudden, here come old Cap. He come in there. He can get the door open and everything. Walk all up in there with another officer like he Billy Bad, man. You know, he come walk over to me. He said, oh, yeah, you. Yeah, I told y'all we're going to see you when you got back here. Then, So I'm sitting there eating and everything. I said, yeah, you did? Yeah, I said, what's up? He said, yeah, come in, let me holler at you. So he get me, take me up, put handcuffs on me. Take me out in the hallway, him and a uh, sergeant. I guess this is what he called his shake up. He gonna run the shake up on. He said, What's your name? You know what I'm saying? I told him my name. He said, Yeah, that's who I thought you was. He said, I looked in your file already. I know who you is. I know how much time you got. I know everything about you, everything you did since you've been in the system. He said, But let me tell you something. I run this camp right here. This is my camp. Yeah. He said, So you come on here and you act like you bad. He said, I'm going to have my eye on you the whole time. Wait for you. Every time. You slip up, I got you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just looking at him right. I'm like, okay. Okay. He said, oh, I just want you to know. He said, you see, remember this name right here. This is my camp. I run this. You know, I said, all right, boss. He said, don't, 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 don't patronize. I said, all right, boss. You run it. You the boss. He said, all right. Just want you to know that. Ask about me when you get back there. Everybody back there gonna tell you about me. I said, yeah, all right, boy. He said, take him on back. Send me on back up in there, right? I'm like, man, this dude is a cold clown, right? You know what I'm saying? But I, I found out about him later on, though. Like I say, he won't lie. He run that compound, you know. But anyway, he sent me on back in there. And we get to uh, move, moving around, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get our stuff together, man. All our stuff come in a laundry bag, big old net bag. You know, we... Check and see and make sure you got two pair of pants, two socks, drawers, underwear, whatever, whatever. You know, then they can start coming, moving us out, taking each, each individual to whatever cell block they was going to. So they come get me. I think I went to a uh, C block, right? So they come get me, man. They tell me they're taking me out, man. So as I'm, as I'm going out the jump and I got my bag thrown on my shoulder, man, and I'm walking, got all these big old country blues on, and I'm walking, going to my block. As we get to my block, they bust the door open. And when they bust the door open, you got to go in. When you go in, you're in the salad port. Then you got to go through another set of bars. And then you're in the, you're in the, you're in the actual block. So when they bust the door for me to go in the salad port, it's a dude coming out the salad port in me. And, man, he seen me and just walked up to me and said, what's up, homie? And, and hugged me. And the jive like threw me back because I'm on a new camp. And his face looked familiar. But it threw me off. So I'm looking at him, and, and I don't let nobody get that close to me. I was, you know, getting ready to, you know what I'm saying, push him up off me. But he said, man, I see you when I get back. I'm getting ready to go to work. And he rolled out. But the thing that stuck out to me about him was he had a very, very familiar face. I knew I knew him. But when you've been locked up now for the time I did over a decade, you know, you saying, do I know this dude from another prison or do I know this dude from the street or whatever? Your mind started playing tricks on you. And the thing that threw me off, he had one eye. He had one eye. So I'm like, I would have remembered that, but his faces look so familiar. So he went on out, 
I go in, right, and that was still on my mind. That was like, that was strange, man. I know, I know this cat, I know this cat. So when I get back there, I walk in the block, like I tell you, Power Tan big, man. It's a, it's a big old block, man. It's a long block. It's almost just like the wall is built. If you y'all wanna watch the documentary on the wall, it's like the wall is built, but the only difference is it got two sides, and instead of four tiers, it got three tiers, you know? So it's a long tier, you got tiers on this side, tiers on this side, and these are bars. This the door to close your door, and you can actually look straight across from your cell inside the other cell. The cell is directly in front of you. You can look right in their cell, they can look right in your cell, man. And the cells is extra, extra small. Yeah, the cells is the cells is extra, extra small, man. It's little, and then there's a double cells, bunk beds. Man, if you get off the bunk bed, man, you can touch the bunk bed right here and touch the wall right here. We hardly got no space in here. It ain't nothing but that. A little, a little uh, um, locker in there in the toilet. Man, big old window that you can look outside to see the yard or look all the way across. You can see receiving. Dudes is in receiving. Power 10 had a receiving. Power 10 actually had a jail. You know what I'm saying? Like a local jail for people that was getting locked up on the street and getting in jail. They, they, they go down there, but we never see them, but it was down in the basement. So it was a dirty, dingy, old compound, man. I mean, dirty, man. Filthy, cold in there in the wintertime. Hot is I don't know what in the summertime, man. They was infested with ants, man. Ants with, man, dudes would take uh, Vaseline and peanut butter and put it all around their window seal to try to keep the ants out, man. It, it just was, it, it was a horrible, as far as conditions on there, it was, it was horrible, man. And, um... Like I say, they still, when I first got there, they still had to crank doors. They had to crank the door open, all the doors open at the same time. Then they crank it back and close all the doors at the same time. Officers would come by, just start slamming your door, slamming your door. You know what I'm saying? I, no, that was, first they crank them, when they crank them. Later on, when they ended up putting that the, the digital thing in, the officers had to come by and slam your door, slam your door. That's when I get down the line, I tell you about that, because that created problems too. But... At first, they just had to crank them and crank them. You had to be up in them doors. If you end up getting stuck outside the door when they all lock up, then they probably won't give you a charge. Sometimes they might go ahead and take you, lock you up, man, say delaying and hindering, you know what I'm saying, in uh, officer's duties or whatever. But I go in the cell with a white dude, man. They put me in the cell with a white dude, man. He he, he was he was a high dude, man. He was a little, little, little out there, but he was a high. But the thing about it was he said he went home in like 29 days. You know what I'm saying? He, he 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 was getting out in like 29 days, so he ain't, he won't care about nothing. All he was trying to do was make it to that date 20, 29 days later, which I understood. But he wasn't no bad dude. He was okay or whatever. Trying to tell me who was on here, what not, this, that, and the third. So I tried to get my stuff settled all in, put my stuff on my bed, but then I want to walk out in the block because I want to check out the atmosphere. I want to check out the faces, make sure I see if I see anybody I know, make sure I ain't got no enemies on here. Ain't nobody trying to get at me, you know what I'm saying? So I got to be ready and be prepared. You got to know, you know what I'm saying, your surroundings and know what's going on. So, man, lo and behold, I see my man Troop, man. Boom, Troop, Troop had left, I told y'all, and he ended up on here. Now, this was crazy because, like I told y'all, man, me and Troop had got into the situation on Greensville, man, where Troop got this real bad charge and I got caught up with him. I told y'all, y'all gonna go back and watch. He's the first story I did on my YouTube page when I started my own page. And I just talked to him again today, coincidentally, and we trying to get something set up where I'm gonna do an interview with you. Y'all are gonna be thoroughly entertained when y'all see this cat right here, cause he been through it, man. He been through it and he, he done done it all. And like I say, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm telling y'all right now, y'all gonna, y'all gonna, uh, y'all gonna really get with his story, man. And he is a talker, so he will tell you all of it and from beginning to end. But, you know, like I say, he stayed in controversy, man. But from the time we was on Greensville to the time, you know, uh, he ended up getting out, man. And we just kept hitting and missing after that. After they separated us on Greensville, I, every time I got somewhere he was, he was gone within a couple of days. And that's what happened on there. Within four or five days, he was working in the kitchen. And he ended up getting the rumbling in the kitchen with somebody this time. And next thing you know, I seen him coming back, packing up his stuff. 
he was gone. So I, I ain't even never run into him no more. You know, he ended up getting out, whatever, whatever, but I ain't run into him no more. But that was last time I seen him. But when I did see him, and we get to chopping it up for a minute, and I asked him, I said, look, man, um, yeah, um, I, I just coming from now the way you know I was there, I just came from there. I said, but when I was coming in, man, I said, I seen this dark skinned dude going out, man. He got one eye, man, and he hugged me, act like he know me. I said, well, he a homie or something. <clears throat> he was like, nah, I don't think so. I said, well, what his name is? And he said, his name is Wheat. And when he said his name was Wheat, and it popped back in my head, he was somebody that I knew from the street. But when I knew him from the street, he had his eye. I knew him from the street from down here in Virginia from when I was down here in the summer times and everything. I knew him. I more so knew his sister than him. He was a, a couple of years older than me, but I knew him, knew about him, had, you know, even dealt with him a couple of times on the street, you know, had conversations with him or whatnot, but um, I definitely knew who he was, man. So now that, you know, eased my mind a little bit that I actually could put a name with the face, you know, but I still was wondering what had happened to his eye, you know. So anyway, Troop went on to work or whatever. I started, you know, looking around. I seen a couple of dudes I knew, a couple of dudes, uh, you know, that I had, you know, did time with or whatever, got to talking to them. You know what I'm saying? Getting a little lay of the land, what was going on on here. But I could see the way things were moving on here already, that this was going to be, this was going to be an experience right here. Because like I say, you got both sides out on this one block, man. And I don't want to say exactly how many people it was, but I know it, I, I know it was in the hundreds. You know, so you got hundreds of people moving around at one time in this one congested block that anything could happen. And they ain't had cameras at this time. They had blind spots. They had the open showers where you ain't had no single showers. You had three floors of showers. You had one on the bottom, one on the second floor, one on the third floor. And these showers got like eight stalls in them. But they all right beside each other. So you got to take showers together. You ain't had no privacy. You, you know what I'm saying? You had to go up and down these stairways. Ain't no cameras. Dudes was getting laid out in them stairways. Chopped down, putting that Bethlehem all up in them decent and leaving them right there and let the people figure out, you know, who did it. So it, it was going down on Power Tech. It, it, it was going down on there. It was a vicious jump. It's, I think Power Tech was the second oldest prison in Virginia besides the wall. So and you could tell the way it was built. It was old, like I say, <clears throat> dirty, run down, rusty. Um, and it's cold when it's cold. Man, you can literally be standing out in the block with your coat, uh, sweatpants, long johns, everything on, button up, and you inside, you in a block, and you talking, and you can see the smoke, uh, you know what I'm saying, coming out of people's mouth, you know, as if they were smoking a cigarette or something. That's just how cold it was inside the block, you know what I'm saying. At the back of the block, they had these gray big windows, and half of the windows was bust out, so... It, it, yeah, it, it was something else in there, man. Um, I can remember, like I say, <clears throat> trying to put my uh, eye on everybody. I saw a couple of people that I actually seen on other institutions, but I didn't actually know their name. Um, this institution also, too, being that they had uh, a medical unit on this institution called PMU. You know what I'm saying? I think it was Power, Power 10 Medical Unit, where it was actually a hospital on this institution, which also created a, a lot of sick people on this institution. No matter what it was, from AIDS to cancer to uh, whatever, they might be on this institution because they had the medical facility to deal with them, whereas today wouldn't have to fly them out take them to MCB or take them on the outside hospital. They actually had doctors and medical people on this. They had a whole nother separate building that was, it was adjacent to this building, but it, it was an actual hospital, PMU. So they had a lot of sick people on here, man. And the thing about that was, um, they was right amongst you. You don't know who it was. They could be put, they could be in the cell with you. You know what I'm saying? Because that was their personal information and it wasn't privy to everybody. So you had to be real cautious on this compound. Like I say, we sharing showers. You in the cell. So you had to be up on your hygiene on here, man. You had to really be up on your hygiene and paying attention to uh, what was going on. Some of it you could see. Some of it you couldn't see. 
but it was it was a dangerous, dangerous uh, situation. Yeah, it was a dangerous situation, man, because we shared the same uh, water fountain. Water fountain. We had a water fountain in there. You might go to the water fountain today and go to look at it, or to either get water. We said the same uh, hot hot water tank. It might be uh, bloody band aids on the, the the water fountain, man. We share the same ice machine. You might open the ice machine to try to get a scoop of ice. It might be blood in the ice machine. It just, man, this thing was, yeah, it was, it was dangerous, man. You had to, you had to be on top of your hygiene on there at all times because you didn't know what you was dealing with. You didn't know what you was putting your hands into. You didn't know. You just had to take care of yourself the best of your your ability on this compound. I learned that off the rip, and my homeboy had told me too. He said, man, you know, it's a lot of sick people on here, so. You know, make sure you're on your hygiene on here. So, you know, like I say, which which was hard to do. I mean, it wasn't hard to do personally, but it was something that you had to always be on. But you in the cell with another person. That's why when you're in the cell with another person, too, you got to make sure that person is, is cleanly as well. Like cleaning up the cell, wiping down behind itself. Because like I can say, we in an open, open uh, doors. These is bars, man. Dudes can do the same thing they was doing in the wall. They could come by your cell, man, and, you know, throw throw stuff in there. You know, they can come by your cell and, you know, uh, light it on fire. You know, it won't nothing you can do. And let me tell you, Power Town used to be called a slaughterhouse. They called it that because at one time they had the cattle there, too. So you, you could smell that outside the window. You know, all them, all them cows, they had a whole grazing field over there across cross that you can look across there and see so you can smell all the cow manure everything man it's just i'm telling you man this was just wow and then you had dudes that was on power tan did have been on there for for decades you know they had one dude man that i actually know he got out um either a little bit after me or a little bit before me but he did his whole time on there he did like 30 30 years 30 some years right there it's very rare that you end up staying on one compound the whole time but you got some people who do i want that fortunate like i told you they was moving me around like you know like i was cattle for real you know like i told y'all greensville that six years stay right there was the longest i stayed on any institution you know besides when i when, the time when i came home now recently i guess right before i made parole i think i stayed on not away let me see, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, well, not a way probably beat it. I stayed on not a way, I think, from 14 till 2020 when I made parole. That's seven years. But those two right there, everything else within 33 years was, was in three to four years on any institution. I don't know what it was, but they just kept moving me and moving me, or, or be it either I got into some type of situation or whatever, and then they just got rid of me. But those are the two longest stints by far that I stayed on any institution at one time. So, like I said, being on here, though, I, I just kept my eyes open, man. And I started looking around and just seeing how people was doing. You know, uh, they was getting it in on here. Like I said, the, the police ain't on the floor. The police would leave and then they would come back and make rounds. So the police ain't on the floor. And by the police not being on the floor and you got hundreds of dudes out here at one time, it won't nothing for the police to leave and come back and somebody laid in the floor bl bloody and, and messed up or laid up there in the shower bloody and messed up and don't nobody know who did it and ain't nobody gonna say who did it. You know what I'm saying? If the dude that's bloody and messed up don't say who did it, then we probably get locked down for a minute and they just go around trying to check, see if anybody got any scars on them, anybody knuckles bruised up, whatever, whatever. But for the most part, that was it. So. That lets you be known right there when you on here. I mean, you got to fend for yourself. You got to be in warrior mode. You got to be ready to go. They had dudes on here. This was an old throwback camp, like I say, because you had a lot of dudes on here. They did a lot of time. So you got dudes on here, man, that's already into their own thing, man. They is uh, uh, extorting dudes, uh, raping dudes, um, uh, uh, taking dudes, commissary, uh, taxing dudes. It's just everything going on on here, man. They running protection schemes. You can dudes that was weak can pay somebody, and that dude gonna go to war for you. Make sure don't nobody do nothing to you. It, it, I mean, they had it, it was going. It was going on here, man. And you you had to learn all of this stuff. Boom, boom, boom. And who was who and what was going on, man? Listen, 
they even had a dude on here, man. They had this crazy dude on here, man. And me, he, I always, I ended up getting it on, but, you know, to a certain extent, but I always looked at him when the first time I ever seen him, man. I'm telling you, man, I wish I had a picture of this dude. Man, this dude looked just like Sammy Davis Jr. I mean, just like him. You know what I'm saying? And um, the thing about it was he was small, but he was cut up because he worked out and everything, which he had to for what he was into. He was cut up and everything, but he was a little dude. He was about probably about five, six and a half, you know, little, stocky. But he facial features, the long jaw, just like Sammy Davis Jr., the head, everything. But <laughs> the thing about it was, Man, they call this dude Suicide. That was his name. Only name I ever knew him by, Suicide. And the reason that I heard it, the, 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 what, what they call him Suicide for was even crazier. They said they called the man Suicide because he was supposed to be sick, you know, like he got, you know, AIDS or either HIV or something like that, but he would take and be trying to rape the white boys. The bank is special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious, man. <laughs> My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.